Okay, I'm gonna get these questions out, guys. I'm ready. He's ready. We're ready. <laughs> okay, got sucked in for a minute. <laughs> Okay. Questions. Yes, looking at the questions. This one comes from Charlotte. She says, your boys seem so sweet too. How old are they and what grade are they in? So, and she had actually asked Lena's age too. So Lena is 19 months now. Hi, babe. <laughs> Speaking of her. Um, she's 19 months now and the boys are seven and five. So they're 22 months apart. So they're really close. Do you want to come sit on my lap? You can come sit on my lap. What is that? That's mommy and daddy. Daddy? <laughs> yeah, here, come say hi. Say hi. You say hi? Does Lena see your birth dad? Um, yeah, we get a lot of questions about her birth dad because he's not in a lot of the vlogs. Um, we don't talk about him as much. He is, um, he does see her. He just lives out of state. Mm -hmm. So we don't get to see him as often as we get to see the rest of them. But we see his parents on a regular basis and um, they're super sweet. And his family and stuff, we see them pretty often. Um, he just lives out of state. So he's actually um, married um, also. So both of her birth parents are married and then they're actually expecting babies. So you guys will probably meet them soon. Um, I think they're coming into town. So we'll have to introduce you to them soon if, if that works out. Let's see. Are both your and your husband's families, along with Lena's birth families, member of the Mor members of the Mormon Church? Um, for the most part. So, um, we we've never really actually talked about our religion on here, but we we are um, members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints, and um, our our families mostly are. My dad actually joined the church when he was a was he 16, 17, something like that? Yeah. Um, so my dad joined the church when he was a teenager. So um, I do have a lot of family that isn't LDS, um, but my my family, my brother and sister, and my brother and sister and my parents are, and a lot of my cousins are too. And then most of your family is too, aren't they? Yeah. How is my health doing since my recent emergency room visit? Better, thank you for asking. <laughs> so they put me on um, a baby aspirin and just we're kind of just like taking it as it goes. So it's it's going good. Things are going really good with that. I haven't had any other recurring, you know, brain issues or um, neurological things at all. So that's been good. That's been really, really good. Um, but they did tell us no more kids. And so we're in the process of getting that nailed down and what we're gonna do there. So it'll be interesting. <laughs> so another question we get asked a lot is why did um, boo, boo. <laughs> why did hey. Tori place Lena? Um, basically, it wasn't that she didn't want her. It wasn't that she, you know, was inconvenienced by her at all. She just felt like this was best for her, plain and simple. She Tori took herself out of the equation and wanted Lena to have a family unit. And so she placed her for adoption so that she could give her what she felt was a better life. Mama. Huh. Mama. Yeah, she loves you, doesn't she? Dada. Okay. Mama. Can you see Tori? Well, Daddy. Tori? Yeah, Daddy. you love to. Daddy. Tori. Okay, here's another one. Dad. Um, so this one actually comes from one of my nieces. She says, I remember witnessing from afar the loss you and Matt struggled with and feeling absolutely helpless. She's talking about when we lost our, our baby, our baby Gabe. I remember having the deepest desire to help, but I ha having no idea what I could do. So my question would be, if you know someone who has lost a child, what can you do? That's I'd tough. like to know the answer to that question too. Yeah, that's hard. Um, being the father of a lost child, especially when it's just in utero, I haven't had an opportunity to build that bond and relationship like Amber had, you know, feeling him inside of her and, um, you know, growing attached that way. So my grieving, well, not to mention we grieve very differently. Um, 
So I felt the same way. I was just kind of, uh, I didn't know how to help or what to do to help. Um, it was a lot harder on me, I would say. Um, just because I had formed that attachment, I was totally bonded to him and, you know, feeling him move around inside me all the time. And um, so I, I would just ask him, just say, if you know someone that's experienced a loss of any kind, just ask him, just say, you know what, I am here for you and I love you, but I don't know what to do. You know, what do you need from me, I think. And if you ask him, they'll just, they'll be able to tell you, or sometimes they'll just say, I don't know. There were times where I just, I needed someone just there, you know? Just someone to be present. Uh -huh. I don't understand. When you lost baby Gabe, did you get the feeling of abandonment by our Heavenly Father? If so, did you get past it? I can't help but feel that way when I get negative news regarding my situation, the feeling of loneliness and disappointment. So this comes from one of, one of my few friends, actually, that used to live by us. So she's going through some really hard stuff right now. I love you. I think about you all the time. <laughs> as far as feeling abandoned goes, I there were times where I felt super angry, super upset, super, you know, alone in the fact that this wasn't what we had planned. Like this was not how it was supposed to be and it wasn't fair. Um, and it made me, it made me have some negative feelings for sure. Um, at that point we just had to choose, you know, what we were going to do and whether we were going to, um, you know, choose those feelings that were a little bit negative and dark or if we were going to really try to move past it. It's not easy. Amber found solace and in um, meditation. I think that was probably the single biggest helper for her getting through that was uh, one of her friends introduced her to some meditation stuff that really helped her clear her mind, clear her thoughts. Calm down. Calm down. Feel at peace with what was going on around me because I felt like there was just this giant storm around me. The meditation helped me kind of feel at peace with what I couldn't control. I've always wondered if you and Tori always agree on how to parent Lena or if it ever causes any issues. Is she ever included on any of your decisions involving Lena? Um, example, like vaccinations or discipline, etc. So Tori is great. She she doesn't try to infringe on any of that ever. She has really let us be Lena's parents. And so she kind of takes on the role of like an aunt. A sister to Amber and I, or an aunt, where to, to Lena. Um, Tori's always been very respectful. Yeah, yeah, respectful is a great word. She um, has never voiced any kind of argument to the way we parent, or vaccinations, or the name. Any, any decisions. The name. That's another question we get a lot. We actually we did pick Lena's name. We named her middle name Grace after Tori, but um, yeah, Lena's name we got to pick out as well. We are working on an open adoption. Ours is through the foster system, so a little different than a private, but our birth mom is, did decide on her own to surrender our baby. We have a relationship with her and her family, also our son's dad. My question is, how do you set boundaries without hurting feelings? We have a blog that answers that question really well. It's called Open Discussions with Birth Mom. Go check that one out because uh, we literally sat around our kitchen table and talked about those kinds of things. Really what it is is just open communication and just say, you know what, this is what I'm feeling. Like, I, you know, I really am having a hard time with such and such a thing. You know, what what can we do? Like, this is what I'm thinking we can do to help solve it. What do you think? And so just kind of take a team approach. So it's not like you're pushing them away and like putting these concrete boundaries there, but just say, this is what I'm feeling. Let's solve this. And being flexible. Mm -hmm. Right? It's a give and take relationship. <laughs> like, you just have to be super candid about um, everything that you're feeling. Would you guys adopt again if a baby had been brought to you? Um, we've talked about that. Um, I Right now, like when, when it was time for Lena to come, there was this driving force that was just so big. <laughs> Because <laughs> she is meant to be here. She's meant to be in our family. She is meant to be in her family. But um, as far as right now goes, I don't really feel that drive again. But you know, if we felt, if we, someone came to us, <laughs> if someone came to us again and it was, you know, an opportunity presented itself, um, we would definitely, you know, really ponder over that and see if that felt right. 
you think there's a specific age people looking to adopt should look for. So, you know, for us, we, we knew we wanted a newborn if we could. Um, but uh, that was just, you know, for us, there's a lot of people that, you know, make it look, work differently. So as far as an age goes to adopt, it's totally individual. Whatever you think is best for you is probably best for you. Um, Honestly, the situation will present itself that's best for you. We believe that Lena was supposed to be in our family because she belongs in our family. Um, so she came the way she did because Lena. Yes, your baby will come the way that they're supposed to come. So it's not just a baby that's coming, it's your baby that's coming. For sure. The one that belongs in your family. Okay, and then do you think Lena will be confused when you guys explain to her that she is adopted or do you think she will feel different? Oh, yeah. We've always taken the stand with that. That Lena just has lots and lots of people that love her. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think it'll ever need to be a sit down discussion. No. Like, hey, guess what? You're adopted because- Ooh. Drop this bomb on her. Tori's always around. Yeah, and it's it's been interesting too with our boys. It's funny, whatever is normal to you as a parent will be normal to your child. So with us, it was just, oh yeah, Sissy's coming from Tori's tummy. And it was normal to them. Like they haven't even questioned that or asked twice about that. It was just, that was just the way it was. Anyway, they think everyone has birth family. So it just is what is ever nor whatever is normal to you will be normal to the baby. And so I don't think Lena will struggle with this bomb being dropped on her because it's just normal. She's gonna grow up knowing um, that she's adopted and that she has a birth family and, and her boys think it's their birth family too. <laughs> it is their birth family too. Uh -huh. Yeah, they They've tell all her, adopted yeah, and yet. They have. They tell their friends, it's our birth grandma. Or it's it's our birth grandpa or whatever. So it's just easy and it's it's normal to them. So whatever's normal to you will be normal to yeah. the kids. Yeah. So anyway, Lena's crazy and we're gonna go eat dinner. So we will see you guys later, but thanks for asking these questions. These are good ones. Things that I didn't know people were wondering, so I like it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on Sunday. Bye guys. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button below. We love you guys around and we appreciate all the new people that have been here and all the people that have been here from the beginning. Yep. Bye. The boys have sent, spent the afternoon digging a hole. They said they were looking for diamonds. Um, and they were super excited to show me, and Cash calls it our subscribers, um, what the hole looks like. So we're gonna show you guys. Can you tell them all about it? Yeah, we dug this hole. Cash found, Cash found a screw from the swing set. Ooh. Yeah, it was dug deep in there. That's a pretty deep hole, good job. You guys are gonna be famous. There you go. And we're trying to make an underground fortress. Yeah. Or how high, or it depends how high we get to diamond. You know? All right, we're gonna take the shovels and go put them away in the garage now, though. Oh, can you get the pickaxe?